Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back. Yes, I am back. Uh, wasn't the the trip I was expecting. Um, I, I know I said I'd be away for several weeks, and I'm, you know, I was going to go away for a while. Uh, yeah, I was told. I was told that this was a six-week rotation job, and technically, yes, this was a six-week rotation. The the rotations were six weeks long. However, what I wasn't told when I signed up was. Yeah, but there's only about five days of work left by the time you join. So, that's why I'm back so early. It's a bit unfortunate. I mean, I would, would have liked it a bit if they were a little bit more up front, but never mind. Um, so, yeah, I was away for 11 days in total. I know, five days of work, why we were... Well, okay, so we had two days of travel, we had a few days of work, and then once the project had finished, uh, the seismic gear all needs brought in, and that takes two and a half days or something, because you're talking several kilometres worth of cables and stuff. And, you know, quite a complicated array with guns and floats and blah, blah, blah. So basically, uh, for those two days, or two and a half days, I was a passenger, just dead weight, you know, using the facilities, eating the food, and contributing nothing. So there we are. And then we got... Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. This is an RC channel. But before I start talking about RC, I just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, first of all, a uh, bit of a long shot here, but... Um, have any of you seen my white snake t-shirt? Honestly, I can't find it anywhere. I mean, I don't know if it's, maybe I left it at my parents' house, maybe I left it at Rachel's house. I mean, it's possible, but unlikely that it was nicked on a, on one of my boat trips because, uh, you know, we've got commun communal, uh, what are they called? The laundry, you know, rooms with all the machines in it. Uh, but it's not very like that. I think I left it somewhere. But uh, yeah, I, I, I really like my white snake t-shirt and I can't find it. Right. And the last thing I'm going to mention before I see stuff, uh, do you remember my silver, scabby, scuffed, dented Alfa Romeo 156? Well, it's not going to be silver, scabby, dented and scruffy or whatever I said a minute ago, 156 anymore, because it's currently in the body shop. Yes, it is. And it'll be coming back a different colour than when it went in. And I don't mean different as in the silver will be better. It will not be silver anymore. I won't give anything away, but I'm so looking forward to getting the alpha back. Yes, it's going to be so good. So yeah, and I'll obviously show you guys what, what the result is. But oh, can't wait, can't wait. Anyway, on with the RC stuff. <laughs> Kicking off the RC news this week is Arma and also coffee. Arma have released a trailer because well, what, apparently what happened is there was a leak within Arma and they had nothing in place to show off this new product so they just, oh we've got this video out, quick, just release the trailer and give them something. So there is no details at all apart from what we see in the trailer. The trailer is Arma Mojave 1 7th scale 6S. It's a 7th scale short course truck. Um, pretty much aimed straight at the Lossy Super Baja Ray and the Traxxas UDR. Um, as I said, there's absolutely no details given. However, what we can surmise is it won't be quite as big as the Lossy. The Lossy is classed as a one-sixth scale. One I'm trying to say sixth for properly. One-sixth scale. Uh, Traxxas don't give a scale for the UDR, they just say pro scale, they, it doesn't, it's not very helpful, they don't actually tell you what scale it is, but the Traxxas is considerably smaller than the Lossy, so it's not a 1 6th, and I've seen shops categorise it as 1 7th, so we'll go by that, we'll say the Traxxas is 1 7th, the, the Lossy is 1 6th, so it will be closer, this, this armour will be closer to the Traxxas size being a 1 7th, but the attitude of it and the design of it is much closer to the Lossy, much closer. Uh, because the the, the, the Traxxas um, has a sort of very much angle towards scale realism. It has lots of scale details that they've, you know, the little fire extinguishers and the, the nets, and they've tried to make it look as scale as possible. But Arma also insists that it's not an out and out crazy basher for lobbing off of ramps and stuff. They're, they're very keen to tell you don't don't treat this thing like that because that's not what it is. The Lossy, on the other hand, is just a metal basher and you chuck it around. The Arma, being an Arma, is very much in that latter camp, you know. It's an armor, there's a jump, two and two makes four. But uh, it does have one key, you can see in the trailer one key difference that but change, you know, varies, not varies, that's the wrong word, but something that differentiates it between both the Traxxas and the Lossy is that the armor does not have a four link solid rear axle 
it doesn't have that that's why the rear suspension is standard what you call standard mode or consider standard it has the um, double wishbone suspension all round now what that means is if they have the suspension and geometry set up properly it will handle better than both the Lossy and the Traxxas which is a good thing as far as I'm concerned um, it, oh, I, I, I personally if it's competitively priced I prefer the look of the armor, even though I'm a lossy fan. I'm not a fan boy, but I'm a, I'm a big lossy fan. But the the armor, just the attitude of it, and the the you know blast not bash, and it just looks really really tough. And the fact that it's you know what you call normal suspension, the 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 double wishbone all round, just it's simpler. It's it's I, I, maybe tougher. I don't know. I mean, four links pretty tough, but you do have, like the the spars, the links themselves are quite thin sometimes. Uh, although not on the Super Baja Ray. I'm getting, I'm waffling a bit here, but the point is, there's no details, so obviously no price or anything, no g d dimensions in terms of millimeters, the actual size, just a 1.7 scale, 6S compatible. Um, you can tell by the um, by the trailer, it's going to be waterproof, uh, the electronics, because they take liberties with the river, so it's waterproof. It looks like an absolute beast, and yeah, it looks fantastic, and just I'll need to link the trailer because there's no other details so watch the trailer. News item number two sticking with Arma they have released a sub $220 range and you know technically that is correct because they're all $219 so yes correct Arma that is less than $220 just not considerably um, but yeah they've released a range of, of well I was gonna say trucks but one of them is a buggy they've got the Typhon buggy the Sentin short coast truck and the Granite monster truck. And now they're, they're classed as Megas, so they have brushed power, uh, 550 sized, 550 sized cans, so slightly bigger motors in them, so plenty of torque. Um, they have identical specs, they're all four wheel drive, uh, they all come ready to run with everything you need, I think maybe with the exception of AA batteries. They come with, uh, which is a, a sort of thing tractors do, which is slightly unusual is they, they come with uh, seven cell nickel metal hydrides with a charger rather than a two cell lipo or a six cell nickel metal hydride anyway so there we are uh one question i mean basically they've got reasonably good spec they've got you know all field shocks all around and bearings and all the rest of it one question i do want to ask you though gearbox uh gears differentials are they metal or plastic because uh traditionally Arma mega series have had plastic diffs and plastic gearbox gears, or at least plastic in them. Maybe not them all plastic, but and the BLX and BLS brushless ones have got the metal, and that means the mega ones are always weaker in terms of the drivetrain. I know they come with less power, but I like upgrading. You guys like upgrading. Everybody likes upgrading, getting more power and all this. It would be good if they came with metal rather than plastic gears, but I haven't found anything. Um, to say either way there's no there's no blurb about toughness of the gearbox which leads me to believe they probably are plastic because if they were all metal they would go all metal gearbox is one of the features so yes i'm thinking plastic probably um another thing i don't know is how that'll translate over to uk prices because we often get screwed over because 220 dollars or 219 sorry 219 dollars is not 219 pounds but more often than not, we basically get a one-to-one -one ratio. Like for example, the new Nintendo Switch Lite, I'm going off topic here, is 200 US dollars and also 200 pounds. You're like, well, that's not 200 pounds because 200, pound, 200 US dollars is about 165 pounds. Apparently they don't pay the same tax. The, the point is, I don't know how much it's gonna cost, right? For your, your, your armor, right, right. Now, not quite sure what to make of this next uh, article, this next item. Um, you know Team Associate, right? The, the race guys. The guys that make the, all the race cars and have won multiple world championships and everything they make is all high-end racer stuff. Well, they've released a miniature football slash hockey thing. RC thing. They call it Nano Sport, and basically you get a, a kit, well... I suppose you'd call it a kit, and it's got two little RC nano cars with the transmitters and the little chargers. And they can charge off the transmitter, I think. And it comes with a, two little footballs or two little hockey pucks, and you basically play 
hockey, Yarsi, football stuff. I believe, I mean, I'm guessing, but it might very much come as a result of the popularity of Rocket League, the multiplayer online computer game with RC boosty football thing. Not RC, but car football. So this is kind of like Rocket League, but without the rockets or the league. And uh, basically, yeah, it's, it is what it is. The little cars look like sort of LMP1 Le Mans prototypes, but they have a little C shape at the front, like the front bumpers here, and then you've got the flare arches that come forward. So it hooks the puck or hooks the ball nicely so you can sort of get it caught rather than just bouncing away. And you push it into a goal. You need to make the own goal, so you could make a box, cut the box, or you could put cones. It, yeah, so nano sport. The retail is 150 US dollars, but of course you don't need to pay that because they never do with these manufacturers. They go, this is the retail price, but we're charging you this much. We'll make that one the retail then, because right now you can get it for 100, not 150. So. Maybe you can continue to get for 100. This happens every week when I do this. Like, oh yes, retail, yes, 300, $300 or 300 pounds, no problem. But we only charge 250 right now and only will for now on. So 250, but you're getting a bargain because it should be 300. You're like, you shoot it though. Is that the retailer or are you just making this up? Yeah, I'm getting way off topic. But the point is, yeah, nano sport from the guys you really wouldn't expect it from because they're like, check out our 700 pound high end racer. Or our little dinky toys that push footballs about. So you can look at either one, right? There's just nothing in the middle, all right? So good. Today's final news item comes from Axial, and it's a bit annoying uh, because they've just teased constantly. They're just teasing, and uh, you don't really know much from their teasers. Teasers, teasers. Uh, so yeah, they've released a little teaser trailer called Axial Capra. You're like, ooh, click, Axial Capra. And then you get this fancy green symbols coming up and the neon against the black background and then you see the word capra right thanks for that so the axial capra the video is just the word capra we learn nothing there and then the next one uh we can see a sort of what looks like this one's a little bit more interesting what looks like two-speed gearbox again it's neon green with yeah and or i don't even know if this is is this one part of the, the video or is this someone taking a screenshot from the from the next video? I don't know if this is an independent video on its own or, or if it's just a screenshot that someone took from the next video. But the point is, the next one shows, yeah, what looks like a two-speed, which is interesting. Okay, right, we, we've got that, that's cool. And again, it's for the Capra, it's not just like, oh, here's a here's an SEX-10 two, two-speed gearbox, enjoy. But no, this is actually to do with the Capra. And then the last one, okay, now we get a confirmation or something. Portal axles. It will have portal axles. So, what it looks like is maybe, initially at least, it looks like uh, Axial might be um, trying to build a competitor to the Traxxas TRX4. TRX4 being a scale crawler, usually coming with a, a Land Rover Defender body shell. It's got the portal axles and it's got a two-speed gearbox. However, however, um, people at Axial Fest, I think it was Axial Fest, um, reported seeing a buggy, a rock buggy, or a rock racer buggy, some sort of buggy with, you know, something that was previously unreleased, and this has got the portal axles and the two-speed transmission. So the strong rumours that they have some sort of rock racer, rock buggy coming out with this setup, which is well, very, very interesting, I think, it would, because Axial are just fantastic at this sort of thing. It's what they do. However, I wonder... This is just me wondering now, this is not anything that they've said or whatever, but I wonder if these portals will apply to the UMG, the thing that is a Unimog, but they're not calling it a Unimog, that I spoke of a little while ago, because real Unimogs have got portal axles, and portal axles are very good for tra traversing terrain, um, so it would make sense for the UMG to be able to be retrofitted with portal axles, so yeah, that'd be cool. So that's axial news, there's something called the Capra coming, it's got portal axles, it might have a two-speed gearbox, it looks like it does, and it might be a buggy, rock buggy racer thing. So that'll be good, and I don't, there's, there's nothing on their website at all, there's nothing, they're giving you absolutely zero, just these really dumb, teasery, neon, flashing, close-up word, 
videos, so I'll link those. And that's it for the RC news. Uh, on to videos of the week and a shout out. Uh, RC video of the week this week is nautical themed, yes. But it doesn't feature a ship or a, or a yacht or a submarine or even one of those daft ducks, radio control duck thing. No, no, no. This week features a Tupperware box. That's right, a radio controlled Tupperware box. <laughs> it's by RC Test Flight and it's uh, autonomous thing where you plot the waypoints on a computer software and then it follows them around and generally confuses the crap out of onlookers and it's quite entertaining and the technology is really fascinating so yes rc test flight check that out it's pretty good <laughs> especially if you like tupperware boxes now video of the week right this week i decided i'm not going to do cars because almost every video of the week i do is about cars and i'm always talking about cars so this week no cars so motorcycles, right? <laughs> Sorry, it has to be done. Motorcycles. Ha have you seen the finale of the 2011 British Superbike season? Now, if you know what I'm talking about, you'll be like, yep, yep. But if you're not, right, okay. Just backstory. John Hopkins and Tommy Hill are separated by two points. This is the final race of the season, and... They're running in second and third. So the gap between second and third is more than two points. So those two points are completely irrelevant. Whoever crosses the, the line first between the two of them wins the championship. It's as simple as that. And the, the championship is decided by six thousandths of a second after a whole year of racing. It's amazing. Just Now there's lots of, you can just Google it or you can search on YouTube. There's lots of variants, but the one I've picked is by Dynamite. And I'm saying Dynamite, not as in, because the reason I'm saying it is because it's not spelt Dynamite as in the stick of explosive stuff. It's the word Dyna and then the word Might. That's the one I've chosen because it's just the two final laps and no, no nonsense, no interview, no music, no nothing like that. But you can find a few of them. But the, the last lap of that season is some of the greatest racing you'll ever see. So just check it out. I'll put that down. And I want to talk about it, but I can't talk about it, so we'll just leave it at that. And this week's shout out goes to Tony from Tony's RC Tech because basically Tony got in contact with me before he started his channel. I think he was only sort of dabbling in RC. I might be wrong, but I think he was sort of not that massively into it. And he said, I'm going to start my own channel. He was asking questions about the outlaw. And eventually he started his own channel and he says I influenced him to start his own channel and he wouldn't have started it without sort of seeing how I was doing it and, and working from there, which is, which I think is amazing. I mean, that's, I'd never, I've, I've never considered myself an influencer to someone else in that regard. So that, that's great. Uh, another thing that's happened, so I mean, I don't know, it was two years ago maybe, and uh, maybe just over that. Anyway, in the meantime, he's overtaken me in subscribers <laughs> and he gets more views. Uh, maybe I should take a leaf out of his book and just upload more often. It's difficult when you work offshore though, isn't it really? Anyway, the point is, well done Tony, you've completely put me in my place. And uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying what you're doing. And uh, keep doing it. And I'll catch up with you as soon as I can. Right guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you as soon as possible and take care of yourselves. Bye bye.